best GC here, and now that we have Iron Man 3, 1, obviously we gotta do 2. So, as I said in my first review of Iron Man, I rewatched these two movies back to back after watching Avengers. And I have to bring up that people really dislike this film because of, like, I don't know, a lot of factors, like, it was not new anymore, the Iron Man was not exciting as the first one the first time we saw it, Villains was kind of lame, blah blah blah. I felt all that when I first watched this. I knew that Mickey Rourke's character was a combination of Whiplash and the Red Dynamo. And I was like, no, they shouldn't have done that. Made it two villains. It would have been a lot better and crazy stuff. And how it ended was just like, whew, where's the action at? You just killed using that cheap trick? No. But after watching a second time and really trying to figure out why... I mean, there is a camp where people like this film. I was like, why do people like this film? Like, I didn't like it on initial viewing. And I have to bring up is that Mickey Rook's character is pretty much the mirrored version of Tony Stark, but Russian. And that his dad didn't get all this fame. And it's a mirror version of Tony Stark of what he could have been. Like an obsessive like builder and like a criminal. Like he could have gone that way. Like he was crazy, but I just didn't get whiplash like you would make the same core as an Iron Man, but make it into a whip, like, what? Sam Rockwell as Justin Hammer was also a good mirror in the sense of Tony Stark if he just went on building machines and for the war. Like, there was a lot of mirrors of, like, this potential futures of Tony Stark. Like, it's probably, oh my goodness, you're looking way into the deep end for this stuff to like the movie. But I enjoyed it. Like, it was good. Like, it showed this version of, like, this potential haphazard of Tony Stark if he went these different routes. This was what he would be. Because he's a jerk, and he's a mechanic, and he's genius, and he builds things, and blah, blah. Scarlett Johansson, people. Sure, she was pretty, like, wow, and what? Sort of, like, didn't make sense in the movie, but she was cool. Black Widow was cool. Nick Fury showed up. There's this actually really funny by Screen Junkies. They were saying that, like, this entire movie of Iron Man 2 is the extended version of the after credit scene with Nick Fury. And I have to say, that's that's a pretty good description. But I still like the movie, because it, it dwelled on things that like made Iron Man 2 perfect. It's like, the thing that is saving you is killing you. That's a pretty great message. And to figure out that you define something new and go back into your past, uh, yeah, that's not bad, I would say. Iron Man 2 takes a bit more time, obviously, but I still enjoyed it in a sense where it was a villain movie. Like, I... In my Iron Man 3 review, I said I actually like 3, 2, 1, because 2 dealt with things that, you know, it's like a normal, like, comic arc for a film. Like, all of a sudden you're struggling to keep yourself alive, and then you got these, like, jerks that are trying to kill you. But though it is a, like, film that could have been improved on so much more, but I like the general gist of it. For it over the origin, because origin is just... Ugh, kill me for it or or hate me on it, but whatever. Anyway, Iron Man 2 movie review. It could have been a lot better if they did like a lot of detail things. Like getting hit by a car four times should kill you. So don't write kill, like hit him four times in the movie for next time for anybody. Like don't bother with that if your villain's gonna stand up and kill more people. Don't try to hit them with a car four times. But yeah, I'm just gonna start rambling, and you're gonna start writing comments about me liking Iron Man 2 more than 1, and I'm nuts. And yeah, I'm probably nuts. Anyway, that is all for this Iron Man 2 movie review.